So we continue with our explanation of chapter one, introduction to railway planning. And we have reached section three, where we are talking about railway safety management. And now we reach the fifth content of this section, which is about understanding railway accidents. So without further ado, let's start. So to understand railway accidents, you need to analyze them. And we have two examples of and examples of two accidents. And for, I just want to highlight that these accidents, I have taken them from Felix Schmid lecture notes. Felix Schmid is a famous professor who have developed then a master's degree in railway systems engineering. And I have took some of these notes, which I have taken in 2010. So let us discuss the first accident, which is Watford accident. The first thing you need to understand is the consequences of events. So the consequences of these accidents happen in the, in, the, in the following, according to the following. Train overshoots red signal due to excessive speed. Driver manages to warn passengers in leading carriage. Semi-fast train collides with empty stock. So there is an accident, but somehow the consequences uh, of that accident have been managed to, re, uh, to be reduced. So the direct cause of this incident, that the driver failed to reduce speed in line with root knowledge. So he could not reduce his speed. And the indirect cause, there, there is a poor design of signal and track layout. He could not actually see the signal. This is why he could not reduce the speed. So, Another dialect because that speed restriction is only necessary to allow sufficient time for braking. So we, he could not see the speed restriction and it did not actually, and the, the, they, were not, they were not designed to allow for a sufficient time for braking. So he should have, the, 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 the signaling system should have been designed in a better way that allowed him to brake and not only to warn the, the passengers. Another direct cause that there was no technical support for the driver, just a weathered sign, a sign that is not clear because of the weather. So this is how this incident happened. So what are the consequences? Two deaths and sighting standard change. The whole sighting standard where you see the signal or a speed restriction has been changed. This is an old accident. Now the, the, the new signaling systems are more developed. You are not relying on the driver. There is for some, uh, some uh, in some countries you have in-cap signaling. In other countries, you would be having um, even an ETCS system or a some kind of uh, uh, a, a, a more advanced signaling system that allows for, uh, a, a, for automated operation. The second incident is Southall accident. So, oh, uh, and with, with this uh, Southall accident, we will be talking about the consequences of event. And intercity train is running according to the timetable. So we have a trainer that is running according to the timetable. But there is another freight train that is crossing the fast lines four hours late. So sometimes freight trains or they should, would be sharing the same track and they would have different speed. So the intercity train is running according to the, uh, to the timetable, but the freight train is late four hours. Unfortunately, they, they are, the intercity trains collide with the freight train because he could not even break. So what is the direct cause? The direct cause that actually the driver, they showed that, that because uh, you have track circuits, had run through three red signals, probably backing his back. So he was busy with something. He passed three red signals, and with that, and with the poor, uh, with the uh, with the late train in front of you, you don't have much. Uh, you don't have much time or much space to maneuver. The indirect cause, there is a poor management and rules change. How, how did you really manage to have a, a freight train being four, late, uh, four hours late on the fast train, on the fast track? Also, there is one of the direct causes that, that the automated warning systems, the AWS system is faulty and isolated. 
So maybe it, it, it's not it's not connected well to the electrification or it did not work. So it did not give the driver enough warning. So it should have actually a strong warning when he passed a red signal that actually you crossed the red signal. The consequences, unfortunately, eight deaths and recovery chaos. It, when you have a major ac uh, accident, it takes it takes time to uh, remove the trains, to uh, bring back uh, the damages to its original uh, condition, to move injured people to hospitals, and it might you might it might stop operations on the railway or, or for a day, or it might affect, or it might affect. Uh, for a day or more, or it might affect the schedule. So there is that recovery chaos that every oper every operator nightmare. So now we have analyzed railway accidents, and we need to talk about uh, systems. Uh, say, uh, uh, sorry, concepts in railway safety. So we'll be talking about the concept of high reliability organization. That organization that demands high level of reliability due to a group of characteristics. So I, first of all, I need to uh, explain what's a high reliability organization. That high reliability organization is the organization that is supposed to uh, manage complex technology or it has any failure within its technology might have a catastrophic event. And examples of these organization is, for example, nuclear power stations aircraft carriers, air traffic control, aviation, space exploration, and more. So there is, here we mentioned group of the characteristics of these higher level organizations. The first, management of complex technology. They have to be managing complex technology and we always need to remember what are the characteristics of a complex system. We talk about that system which have a complex technology element in it. Success and survival require high performance, safety, and reliability. Error, error resource are dynamic, inherent, varied, and high, highly consequential. It has a, a great consequences if an error happens. Imagine that you are working in a nuclear plant or a nuclear reactor, and you had a problem with that nuclear, uh, nuclear reactor, you might have to clear the area uh, uh, within a 50 kilometer radius or within a 30 kilometer radius. So uh, there is a great consequence for, uh, for failure. Operating environment is a constant threat. Well, of course, there is always that threat from the operator making that mistake, which leads the uh, to uh, several failures, which lead to a major uh, uh, catastrophe. And the final thing, consequences of, unreal, uh, consequences of unreliable operation can be catastrophic. So with those five elements, we understood high reliability organization. So approaches inspired by HROs. So how we can understand risk and understand safety within these organizations, there is some kind of uh, principles that you need to uh, be thinking about and there are some approaches that you need to adopt in order to make sure that you develop that coherent and consistent and robust safety system. So this organization encourages skepticism. You need to be skeptic about events, to record them, to report them, to make sure they are uh, they, they, any event in the future is maintained, is controlled. So to have that skepticism uh, uh, within the culture of your organization to, uh, to push the safety limits even higher. Report near misses, not faults, not failure, but a near miss. Uh, at, for example, a train passing a red signal, a train passing a yellow signal. So you really, you really need to report these near misses. Encourage culture of reporting near misses, almost the same as the uh, second one. Plan for worst case scenario. So plan for uh, wor worst case scenarios and recognize systems as complex. So there is five HRO principles that you might also be thinking about. Sensitivity to operations, make sure that those operations you are uh, sensitive to, uh, to what you are doing or to your operations, make sure that they are working in a, a according uh, to to, to the plan, 
Preoccupation with failure, make sure that if a failure happens, you can control it. Reluctance to simplify, uh, don't simplify things, but things about detailed aspects. Commitment to resilience, when a failure happens, you, you, uh, you are resilient and you fix it and you go to, uh, you make sure that your operation is safe again, then uh, another failure happens and you move in a very resilient manner. Difference to expertise, make sure that different expertise is understood and, in, and higher level of specialization is encouraged. So this was a very quick introduction on rail, uh, uh, we, railway safety management. And we mentioned in, the, in this section, we talked about railway accidents as well as we talked about uh, high reliability organizations. One of the system, uh, one of the concepts in railway safety management. We'll see you in the next lesson and we'll be talking about railway operations planning. And till then, have a great evening and see you soon.